What's up, everybody? It's Coach Sharf. Welcome back to my Algebra 2 notes videos. Today, we are going to talk about factoring quadratics. Let's just jump right in and get started. All right, so we are factoring quadratics, something we did in Algebra 1. So we're just reviewing it right here right now for Algebra 2. Again, some of y'all might not remember, that's okay. So we are factoring quadratic expressions. The two things we're going to try to master are factoring quadratics of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Our standard form of a quadratic is the actually the second one, ax squared plus bx plus c. But our first learning target is talking about when I do not have a coefficient in front of x squared. It's just x squared plus 6x plus 8 is an example. Second one is when I do have a coefficient out there. We got to do it two different ways. So um, the standard that we're going to focus on here is ASS3E3A, factor any quadratic expression to reveal the zeros. So we're even just only focused on the, the factoring part. Uh, we're not focused on the zeros yet. We'll worry about that. Solve it with, we talk about solving quadratics, which we'll start with the next video. All right, so factoring quadratics. When we're factoring quadratics, let's stop and think for a minute, okay? Let's stop and think for a minute. Let's try to think back to, to algebra one. Anytime we need to factor an equation in the form of, of x squared plus bx plus c, this is how we'll look at it. Let's see if y'all, if you either remember from class because you already saw it in class and you're you know, maybe just reviewing the notes video or if you're getting the notes for the first time, try to remember from Algebra 1 how we factor this. we got to find numbers that give me B, numbers that give me C. Not, it's got to be the same numbers. I'm trying not to be too, too concise, but that's basically what our next slide is going to say. What two numbers, when multiplied together, give me this C? And when they are combined together, give me this B. Let me slide that down a little bit. Only one set of numbers will work. If you need to go back and copy the previous slide, you can. You can copy down this one as well. Um, you know, pause the video, do that. Like I said, y'all, you know, y'all gotta pause it on your own because I'm not trying to make hour-long videos. So I'm not necessarily worried about my signs right now. My signs do come into play, but I need two numbers that multiply to give me C, that combine, add or subtract to give me B. Only one specific set of numbers works. It might appear like you could get an example where two sets of numbers would work, but once you bring signs involved uh, into, into play, get signs involved, only one of those sets of numbers actually works. All right, so we'll start with x squared plus 12x plus 32. In order to factor, x squared, in order to factor the expression, excuse me, x squared plus 12x plus 32, we have to ask ourselves, what two numbers, when multiplied together, give us 32, and when added together, give us 12? So for 12, it says, don't look at the x next to 12, focus on the number. So if y'all remember from... Algebra one, when I'm factoring this, I'm trying to break it down into two binomials, okay? These binomials, when multiplied together, will get me back here. This is gonna be plus and plus. Again, we'll talk about the signs more in a minute, but we start with plus plus for a reason. We just wanna look at 32, okay? And again, the reason why we look at 32 is there's only three combinations that I can multiply to get 32. Three pairs of numbers that I can multiply together to get 32. If I was looking at 12, if I'm adding two positive numbers, that could be, I believe, seven combinations. 0, 12, 1, 11, 2, 10, 3, 9, 4, 8, 5, 7, 6, 6. So I have seven combinations of just positive numbers. Now, if one of the numbers is negative, we can have infinite combinations, 13 and negative 1, 14 and negative 2, 15 and negative 3, 16 and negative 4, so on, so on, so on. But for 32, there's only three combinations. 1 times 32, 2, 
times 16, the one that most of y'all probably said, four times eight. Which does that do? Give me 12. Well, four times eight does. Here we go. So that's all I'm doing with my factoring when I don't have a coefficient in front, okay? If you want to check if you factored correctly, multiply your factors back together with FOIL or the box method. You do need to write this math tip in your notes. You don't have to write the check if you don't want to, but I'm gonna work it out just so we can see it. So we had X plus four times X plus eight. Let's do the box method again. I prefer the box method. We're gonna need the box method in unit two, so might as well get used to using it. X4, X8. So we know we're gonna start X times X is X squared. We know we're gonna start there. So kind of going back to what am I multiplying to get 32, okay? Does eight times four give me 32? Because if not, I already know I messed up. Does eight times four give me 32? Yes, it does, we know that. So now let's do my other two boxes. X times four is four X. Eight times X is eight X. So I've still got my diagonal that is like terms, four X and eight X, you know, it's a little more like X, you know? So I've got X squared, four X plus eight X is 12 X plus 32. So that was my original quadratic. So it checks out. All right, so the main thing we want to focus on is the numbers. Again, got to multiply to get the C, add or subtract to give me B. The signs are also going to help us out now, okay? The signs are also going to help us out. I thought I switched this. I guess it did not save. If you already got it in your notes the way it is here, that's fine. I actually wanted to switch. Multiplying and adding. All right. So plus plus. So, and I thought I switched that too. I guess I did not. Signs in the quadratic. So we're looking at the signs in the quadratic, not for our factors. The signs in the quadratic tell us what our signs and our factors mean. Okay. So when the signs in our quadratic are both positive, both of our signs and our factors are positive. That's easy. Because multiplying two positives would give me a positive C. I think I even put a C on the end there. Give me a positive C. Adding two positives would give me a positive B. My example, x squared plus 6x plus 8. And we've seen this a couple of times already. We saw it back in the vocab when I was talking about binomials. If I factor that, what multiplies to give me 8? That adds up to give me 6, 2, and 4. So my factors are x plus 2 times x plus 4. All right. I've already written on it, so I will do that. Let me go back and erase, but I'll be out there. All right. Minus plus. So again, I thought I guess I switched I switched that, but I guess it didn't say. So before y'all write, let me switch this. Multiplying two negatives gives me a positive. Adding two positives gives me negative. Adding two negatives gives me negative. All right. Oh, and this one too. This, these weren't supposed to be C's right there. They're supposed to just be blanks. I guess I did not say that. Like I thought I did. Okay. All right, minus plus. So when the first sign is negative, the second sign is positive in my quadratic, both my signs and my factors are going to be negative because multiplying two negatives. Actually, I'll move that to another. Multiplying two negatives, so a negative times a negative would give me a positive C. Adding two negatives, negative something plus negative something would still give me a negative B. My example is X squared minus 10X plus 16. 
Again, y'all can pause this for a minute to get it. I'm moving on to the next slide. Plus and minus, and minus and minus. So plus, minus, minus, minus. Again, I did not fix that. Let me fix that. It's supposed to be minus. All right. So first sign is positive, C is negative. First sign is negative, C is also negative. Again, really the onus on this one is C is negative. I know C is negative. To multiply two numbers to get a negative C, one sign has to be positive, one sign has to be negative. So both of our factors are going to start or when we're writing the outline for our factors. In both of these instances, I'm going to have one positive sign, one negative sign. So then it's just a matter of figuring out which number goes where in each situation. So a positive plus a negative can give us either a positive or a negative. So five plus negative three is positive two. Four plus negative nine is negative five. We got to follow the B term. If the B coefficient is positive, which is our plus minus, B is positive. The larger number is positive. That goes back to five and negative three. So I had five and negative three. It gave me positive two. So if B was positive two, I would have positive five and negative three here. If the B coefficient is negative, so if our B here on minus minus was negative five, the larger number is negative. So I'd have negative nine, positive four. So positive four, negative nine would be up there. All right, my examples. So I use the same numbers, except one's a positive five, one's a negative five, okay? This is still, needs to be negative. All right. So x squared plus 5x minus 14. What do I multiply to get 14? Only 1, 14, and 2 and 7. I'm going to move my head back up here now because y'all should have written minus minus already. This was the same, by the way, if y'all didn't notice. I guess it's just said that. Hopefully it's not too late. This was the same as the top of the previous slide. So after you wrote, if B is positive or B is negative, you could have just kept going with this. Anyway x squared plus 5x minus 14. I know, so for 14, let me actually write it out. One times 14, two times seven. Which of those can combine to give me five? Well, I know it's gotta be seven minus two. 14 plus one is 15, 14 minus one is 13. So, I'm going to do 7 minus 2, maybe 2 minus 7. Since B is 5, the bigger factor must also be positive. Right? So if I know I'm using 2 and 7, again, the question you kind of want to ask yourself is, what's going to give me positive 5? 7 minus 2 or 2 minus 7? Of course, that would be 7 minus 2. Down below, it's flipped. Okay? So now that I got negative 5, again, I'm still using 14, so still 1 or 14, 2 and 7. Now that I'm using negative five, my bigger factor seven must also be negative. So now I'm going to get two minus seven, which is negative 14. All right, let's look at some examples. So I've got one example each of plus, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, minus. It says factor and then check by multiplying, show your work. I'm not necessarily going to check these. If you want to, that's okay. Oh, I don't want that one. So I'm already using my pen here. All right, x squared plus 9x plus 14. Again, we literally just did 14. 1 times 14, 2 times 7, which of those is going to give me 9, of course, 2 and 7. So I'm going to do x plus x plus. Because this is plus plus, I'm using 2 and 7. Since both of these are positive, it doesn't matter what I stick where. So I'll do 7 and 2. All right, let's look at 2 and 3. So two and three is what I was talking about back at the beginning of the notes about only um, one pair of numbers will work, okay? And we're about to see why in a second. So x squared minus 13x plus 30. I got minus plus. Since 30 is positive, I know my signs have to be the same. Since 13 is negative, I know they're both going to be negative. What can I multiply to get 30? 
five and six. Probably the most common one y'all come up with. One times the number itself. You could probably get three times 10 relatively easily. Since 30 is even, I can divide it by two. So I'm also going to get two times 15. So now we got to look at these. Say, which can I combine to get 13? Well, three and 10 probably jumps out pretty quickly at y'all. But let's also look at two and 15. I can do 15 minus two, or in this case, 2 minus 15 to give me a negative 13. So which one am I going to use, 3 and 10 or 2 and 15? Well, let's look at what I wrote out down here. I did 2 minus 15. This is a positive 2. Okay, It has to be positive. If I did 2 and 15 there, this would give me negative 17. Negative 2 plus negative 15 is negative 17. So that one wouldn't work. So it's got to be 3 and 10. Again, I could do 3 and 10 or 10 and 3. Doesn't matter. Negative 3 times negative 10 is positive 30. Negative 3 plus negative 10 is negative 13. So there's that example. All right, number 3. Now I'm doing plus minus. Since 30 is negative, I know I got to use opposite signs. So 1 is x plus, 1 is x minus. Let's kind of refer back down here now. We'll just rewrite it up here just to make it a little easier. Five times six, one times 30, three times 10, two times 15. So y'all might already see what I need to do with it, but let's say you're in a hurry and you had this about, you know, you probably wouldn't get asses bad to back on a test. Well, let's say you had one of these like five or six problems going, and then you come back to this. Okay, all you see is your numbers are the same. You, you kind of blindly don't look at the signs. Some of y'all might just go ahead and, and pick what I'm about to show and move on and I don't even think twice about it. So you just recognize the numbers are the same and say, oh, I'm gonna use three and 10, again. okay? I got positive three minus 10. All right, that does happen to give me negative 30 when I multiply it. But three minus 10 gives me negative seven. Gives me negative seven. Well, that's not right. Let's erase it. Let's try 10 minus three. All that did was flip it around. 10 minus three gives me positive seven. Ah, so 10 and three don't work. What about 15 and two? Didn't I say 15 and two could also combine to give me 13? Yes, I did. And I showed it right here. I could do 15 minus two or two minus 15. So which of those is going to give me positive 13? 15 minus two. So here we go, 15 minus two is positive 13, 15 times negative two is negative 30. All right, number four, x squared minus x minus 42. What can I multiply to get 42 that I can add or subtract to give me, huh, I don't got a number. I don't got a number, what do I do? What do I do? Oh, wait, when I don't have a coefficient in front of x, it's like there's an invisible one there. So I got x squared minus 1x minus 42. What can I multiply to get 42 that I can add or subtract to give me 1? Okay, let's try that. Let's try that in a second. Let's look at our signs first. 42 is negative, so I know one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. All right, what can I multiply to give me 42? And first one most of y'all are going to think is probably six and seven. Well, I can use six and seven to give me one. Yeah, we can. But again, we saw up here, we might have more than one thing that can multiply to give me 42. That can add or subtract to give me one. So let's just double check just to be sure. Two divides by two. So divided by two, give me 21. One times 42. Let's see here. Let's, let's run through my division rules to make sure I'm okay. Um, if I add the digits and the sum divides by three, my number divides by three. Four plus two is six. Six is divisible by three. So I can divide 42 by three, which is 14. So 
So <laughs> Coach Sharps actually is struggling a little bit. I think the rule for 44 is that the last two digits divide by 44, the numbers divisible by 44. I might be switching that with seven or something. Um, I'm not sure off of 44, a uh, four off the top of my head. So do 42 divided by four, you see you'll get 10.5, which obviously doesn't work. Can't divide it by five because done in five or zero. And I already know six times seven. So these are only four things I can multiply it. Okay. So which of those can I use to get negative one, six, and seven? I'm going to have positive six minus seven. All right. So there's some examples on fat during when x squared does not have a coefficient. What do I do, however, when x does have a coefficient? What happens when my coefficient on x squared is greater than one? We're gonna do something called slide, multiply, factor, divide. My odd periods, I, I went back and showed y'all this next slide. Ms. Belk should have shown this to y'all when I was out. Uh, I went and added this extra slide in, so my odd periods should have seen it. My even periods probably have not, so you need to write it down. So it's actually got a list of, Ms. Belk went through the steps with y'all, but I actually have the steps written out. And some of y'all actually seeing the steps written out can apply instead of just, you know, seeing the progression of the steps. And because you get, you know, you understand the steps written out in English better than just looking at the, at the numbers. All right, so since you should be looking at this on your computer screen, let me make this tiny for a minute. Turn my head out of the way. So our four steps, you got to slide the leading coefficient, so the number in front of x squared to the back by the constant. Multiply that coefficient in the constant. So the number I slide to the back, I get rid of on the front, multiply it by the constant on the back. So it's just gonna leave me x squared something, okay? That x squared something, I should be able to factor, right? If you can't factor it at that point, you might run into a problem that we, you know, maybe we got to solve using the quadratic formula, but of course we're not there yet. So, you know, at least these two problems and the examples I'm giving you and the problems in your homework, you'll be able to factor. Divide the constants of the binomials. So you're gonna get your two binomials. So the constants that are here, we're going to divide those by the coefficient that we moved in the first step. And it's going to look like fractions. So if we move to five, we're going to do five, five. So we're going to have two fractions, and we need to simplify those fractions, whether it's straight up dividing or reducing the fraction. If I have a fraction that doesn't divide evenly, there's one kind of, I just kind of lump it into this step, but there's kind of one extra thing that we got to do if it doesn't divide evenly. But let's look at a couple examples to explore that. All right. So we're going to start with 2x squared plus 9x plus 10. Now I'll make this bigger again. All right. 2x squared plus 9x plus 10. First thing I'm going to do, I believe I used blue when I went over this with first, third, and fifth period. I'm going to slide my two to the back, and then I'm going to multiply it by my constant. It's going to leave me x squared plus 9x, 10 times 2 is 20. So there's slide multiply, first two steps. Knocked out. Now I got a factor. So I'm saying factor, I'm talking about getting my binomial factors like we were just doing. So x, this is plus plus. So I know it's gonna be plus plus. What can I multiply to get 20? One times 20, two times 10, four times five. Which of those are gonna add to give me nine? Of course it's four. And five. So I factored this. Okay. So he, here's the thing we got to kind of recognize at this point. Okay. We're, we're not solving quite yet, but I can't just set these equal to zero and get my solutions. Okay. What I did up here is technically not mathematically 
allowed or legal or, you know, kosher, if you will, however you want to say it. 2x squared plus 9x plus 10 and x squared plus 9x plus 20 are not equivalent equations, okay? If I plug in, let me pick a good number. Let me pick, uh, I want to pick something where it shows the difference. Let me pick eight, okay? Eight's going to give me a decent size number. If I'm going to do two times eight squared plus nine times eight plus 10. Okay, eight squared is 64. Two times 64 is 128. Nine times eight is 72 plus 10. It's going to give me 210. I plug eight and then down here, I'm going to get eight squared plus nine times eight plus 20. Eight squared is just 64. I don't have the two to multiply it by to get me 128. Plus 72 plus 20 is going to be 156. So I plugged in eight here and here, and I did not get the same answer. Okay, you don't have to write that. Let me clarify. You don't have to write that. I'm just I'm showing you that this equation and this equation are not really equal. Okay. But When I factor this, what's going to kind of come back and make it even is when I bring this down to divide, okay, I'm doing it in blue because my two is blue. You know, I really could have done it in red, though, because it's the opposite of this multiplying step. So it basically undoes the 10 times 2 right there, okay? Basically undoes that. So first thing I want to look for is if either one of these divides even. Four divided by two does divide even, so it's going to be x plus two, okay? Five halves does not divide even. So I can't just do what I did here, okay? When I have a fraction, when I get to this step on dividing, I think actually we're dividing, let me do that. So when I get to this step, if I can't divide this fraction evenly, first thing I need to look for is if I can simplify, it, if I can reduce it down. Five halves is already reduced, simplified as, as far as it can go, okay? So once I get to that point, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take my denominator, and I'm going to slide it back in front of this X. So that's basically undoing this slide step. Okay. That's basically what's that, what that's doing. So that's going to give us 2X plus 5. So this is this factor. This one may be a less obvious to y'all and why that works. So let's, let's do the math to check. It. Got 2X and 5 up top. X and two down the side. Two X times X. Let's ignore the two for a second. We know X times X is X squared. I have the two out in front. There's not another coefficient to multiply it by, so I'm just gonna keep my two out in front. So there's my two X from originally. Two times five is 10. There's my 10 from original. Okay, it's looking good so far. X times five is five X. 2 times 2x is 4x. And lo and behold, what does 5x plus 4x give us? 9x. So this checks out, got me back to my original problem. All right, one more. 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. I'm going to go a little quicker on this one. Slide my 6. Multiply it by the five on the end. It's going to give me x squared plus 13x minus 30. Well, that should hopefully be ringing some clues if you're watching this all together instead of over two separate days like we did it. 
we just did that right there, okay? We just did that right there. Again, let's use our context clue. Sometimes you get that on test. It's kind of what I was talking about. You know, maybe you got this problem on a test and then you got that one, except that one was different because you had different signs. But if you didn't just do that one or maybe you took a break from the video and came back and watched it later, again, let's try to go to factors. So since 30 is negative, I know one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. What can I multiply to get 30? 30 times 1. Five times six, I know it divides by two, gives me 15. Oh, and three times 10. So again, two and 15, three and 10, both of those can give me 30. But I'm trying to get positive 13. The only way I'm gonna get positive 13 with three and 10 is to add positive three and positive 10. Well, I can get one of those to be positive, but this one's negative. So I'd have 10 minus three or three minus 10. That's not gonna work. So what about two and 15? How can I use 2 and 15 to get positive 13? Well, I, put, I wrote it in purple, but I'll circle it in green because it's supposed to be our factor step. Got ahead of myself. So it's our factor step. We're using 2 and 15. It's actually going to be 15 minus 2. All right. Bring our 6 back down to divide. Okay, two divide. So, unlike on the first problem, we had four divided by two divided evenly, five halves, which I cannot simplify any further. Both of these I can simplify. So, even though I could just simplify one, you could probably just bring down the other as is. You know, if it was a fraction, I couldn't simplify any further. If you could divide it like four over two, you could just bring it down as two. But I'm going to bring this down. And now I'm going to simplify each of these fractions. All right. So y'all could probably do 2 sixths first would reduce to 1 third. Divide both, both the numerator and denominator by 2. 15 sixths, I'm going to divide both the numerator and denominator by 3, which is actually going to give me 5 halves, same as we had in the previous problem, just coincidentally. So there's that. Again. Here's my problem with this, okay? Even when I divided this step, so I showed pre on the previous one, you know, x plus four times x plus five giving me the x squared plus nine x plus 20. Wasn't the same as what I had up here. So even at this step, this is not going to be the same as what I had up here. If I actually were to multiply this out, let's see if Coach Sharp can use this real quick. It would be x squared. I would have positive 5 halves x minus 1 third x. And if I get like denominators, it would be 15 over 6 minus 2 over, oh, we already did that. So it would be 13 over 6. So x squared plus 13 6 x. Multiply that together, it would be negative 5 6. So really, it would just be our original problem with everything divided by six. Six divided by six will give me one, 13 divided by six, and five divided by six. But I wanna get back to my original, all right? So that, that you know, technically that would, that would give me the same value if I just divided everything by six, okay? It's not just, you know, when I slide this six, I'm dividing, I'm essentially dividing this by six, multiplying this by six. That's why it's not the same mathematics, okay? If I, you know, if I had what I just previously had and divided all of these by six, technically it's the same problem. But I want to get back to exactly what I had up here. So that's even still why at this point, after I simplify, I throw my two back out in front, I throw my three back out in front. And I'm going to get 2x plus five times 3x minus one. And I'm not going to check this one if you want to. You can. All right. So there are the notes on factoring quadratics when x squared is one. It's just x squared by itself with, you know, not a number two or greater out in front of it. And when you have a coefficient on x squared greater than one. Again, two examples we had were two and six, but of course it can be any. 
All right, so there's those notes. Good luck on your homework. If you got any questions, send me a message in your mind. Until then, I'll see you all in class.